Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Sierra C-Class 2990 TRIK 5th wheel. Again, this is the C-Class version of the Sierra, so this is their smaller lineup of 5th wheels. We're going to take a minute, walk you through the inside and the outside, then we're going to close it all up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside this brand new Sierra 2990 TRIK. We're going to run around the inside here real quick, and then we'll head back out. We're going to start back here in the rear of the camper. So you do have some overhead storage above your theater seat area. And those storage doors actually have little shocks on them to help hold them up, which is kind of nice. You have a manual theater seat, which does have the little lighted cup holder rings, along with a little bit of accent lighting below the bottom there. You double tap those cups to basically turn off or on the lights. Now across the back of the RV here, you have again some more overhead cabinets up there. Nice big windows throughout the coach down here as well. The sofa will fold out into a bed. This is a tri-fold style sofa. Does even give you room to kind of maneuver around the island and everything, even when it's out. Little end tables on each side of the sofa as well. And you have an electric outlet on the rear wall there, one on each side of the big window back there. Up above, you have an electric ceiling fan. So it works off 110 volt or 120 volt instead of 12 volt. Electric fireplace here as well. Again, nice looking little cosmetic feature there, but it does have a 5000 BTU space heater built into it. Little sound bar up above. And then you have your big flat screen TV, which is on a movable swing arm. And a little bit of overhead storage above that as well. Really pretty coach. Having the two opposing slide outs down here, you know, really kind of opens everything up nice and big down here, even for a shorter coach. Now, the freestanding table over there does have a little storage in the chairs. There's also a leaf extension on it as well, but it's all kind of wrapped up there at the moment because it's getting ready to get shipped out. On the side of the island, there is a little accent lighting down there, which does have a switch on the side there to turn it on and off. You have an electric outlet on the back side along with your propane leak detector down there. Now, beside the TV area, you have a pretty good-sized little pantry area. There's some multiple drawers down below, along with some shelving and storage up above. Up top here, you have the large microwave with some storage beside and above as well. Below, you have some drawer space there, full extending, ball bearing drawer guided drawers, along with the graystone oven and three burner stove top. It has the glass lid, glass door front, built in lights as well. Now this unit was ordered with the gas and electric refrigerator. Customer wanted that over the traditional. So it will work off propane or electricity, either one. And by doing so, it is technically a hair smaller than the traditional version, but overall, a really nice feature if you're going to boondock camp a lot. Over here, you can see you do have a single bowl sink, has a matching sink cover, high rise sprayer faucet there. Then down below on the island area, you have three drawers. Again, full extended barber and drawer guides, and then you have some storage underneath as well. But plenty of room to kind of get in here, maneuver around, do your cooking and cleaning and whatever you need to do. Really nice setup. A 
Back against the wall over there, you do have quite a bit of overhead cabinet space. And in the right cabinet there, you can kind of see, it's kind of lit up there. That is the jack control. We'll go over that here in a second. Um, down below, you have some storage space and four drawers. And on the left side, it's kind of like a little vented graded area because that is your furnace return. On the side of that cabinet down below, you have the optional uh, central vacuum system that they ordered on this one. And by the step area there is also the electric box with the breakers and fuses. You have some light switches, your air conditioner and furnace control as well. Up top here, you're going to have some more controls. So you have your slide controls for each individual slide, three slide out unit awning and porch lights. Uh, you also have the ceiling light, hallway light, water pump, water heater on gas button, the electric buttons outside. This was ordered with the 12 volt tank heater feature. And you've got your gray and black tanks and stuff here as well. And you also will have your awning in and out button here. Now the panel itself is kind of generic as far as for Sierra's different models. So on the holding tank side of things, you know, you may have like a black tank one and two, even though this particular camper doesn't have two black tanks, uh, but their bunk model may with two bathroom kind of thing. So that is one thing that is kind of a little generic on the RV. Now over here again, jack controls. So if you want to auto level the unit and kind of do some of the stuff that needs to be done, you do that from right here. Little entry handle or a little handle there to help you kind of get up and down the steps. Ceiling fan switch, another light switch. Going on up into the bathroom area here, we will pop up a picture of this so it's a little easier to see too. Um, but basically you do have a little fan up above, it's called a max fan. And that basically is there to kind of exhaust out moisture and steam and stuff from taking a good shower. We've got the glassed in shower enclosure, foot flush toilet. Little storage below the sink area there and a nice sized mirror. Now over on the sidewall over there, that is part of the slide out, which is kind of combining the bathroom and the uh, bedroom together. We're gonna spin over here for just a second. I'm gonna show you what it looks like from this angle. So you got your bedroom dresser drawers, but you also have kind of a little linen closet section right there as well. And a little drawer down below. But overall, pretty decent sized bathroom, and you can get to it multiple ways. Back to the bedroom section here. You can see, again, ordered with the second air, so you've got another air here, which is also tied into the ductwork as well, but you can dump out the air pretty much here only if you want to. Overhead cabinets and lower cabinet on each side of the bed. Electric outlet USB charger ports on both sides of the bed as well. Room to walk around the bed also. The bed does raise up and there's a lot of storage under there. You can see there's a 50 inch flat screen TV box under there. The other portion of the slide out there, you have four good sized drawers on the left, another one down below, and then you've got some hanging closet space there. And then you do have plenty of space there to hang probably about a 32 inch, maybe a 40 inch flat screen TV there, uh, but I'd say a 32 would probably be safe. And some more controls on the wall. Again, this one had the solar prep feature added to it and that is where that solar prep controller would go if you do that feature. 
but overall pretty cool unit guys now we are going to head outside i want to show you around the outside and then we're going to come back inside and close this one up show you what it looks like closed all right guys we're now back on the outside of this brand new sierra c-class 2990 trick we're going to walk around the outside and we'll go back in and close it up so one of the big things you're going to notice different on the outside of the rv is going to be coloration this has gone from last year's old version of a cream colored kind of a beige sidewall to a lighter gray sidewall so the fiberglass color changed the graphics on the outside also changed so complete new look exterior wise now you do have a power awning with an led light strip built in manual override is capable in the front head up here in case of an electronic failure and the arms are tiltable for adjustable uh, features of pushing the water one direction or another so it'll run off a little better the windows are deep tent safety glass windows the unit comes prepped for the four camera Furion observation system cameras. If you wanted to do such a thing, you can. Basically on this front running marker light on each side, you would be able to attach a camera. Then you would also be able to do one above the entry door and one on the back. So when you're driving down the road, you could see four different positions. But also when you're in the camper, you could take the monitor inside the camper when you're camping and see around the outside of your camper as well. Now behind the front door here is gonna be your two 30 pound propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator. Now behind this next door is gonna be your pass through storage area here. So you do have your battery disconnect in there, a couple LED lights in there, some TV hookups as well. You can also see the aluminum tube framing there as well. The baggage door is also a little bit thicker than most smaller uh, mid-sized fifth wheels, I guess you'd say. And it has the metal baggage door handle there, slam lock baggage door handle. Now you have the outdoor speakers there. You can see the two little blue lit up speakers. There's an outside spray port there and an electric outlet also. The step going into the coach is the more ride step above step. Now this is a nicer step. Uh, it's actually an improvement even over some of the other ones more rides have had for a while. This step does flip up inside the RV. It's got the shock assist on it. And it also has these new adjusters so you don't have to pull pins out to adjust the feet. It's got little quick uh, pulls on it. So it's a little bit nicer than the earlier version. The step the nice feature, another nice feature on the step is the fact that it will hold up to 500 pounds, where a traditional hover style RV step only does 300 pounds. Now, the negative to the step, obviously, is it goes inside the RV, so you do have to sweep it off, make sure it's clean before you go flipping all the dirt inside the camper. Up above there, you can see a traditional porch light. So you have a porch light and an LED light strip, which is kind of nice. You can light up the outside two different ways, depending on the amount of light you need. Entry door, a little bit wider entry door than some mid-profile fifth wheels. So you do get a little more elbow room going in and out of the RV. Large folding entry handle here going in and out of the RV to help you. And then your model number is located next to the entry door there also. And that basically is how you'll identify what model you like as you're walking around a dealer's lot. So remember that model number, take a picture of it with your phone or something, so you can tell the salesperson what you like. You'll also know uh, below that model number is the aluminum frame vacuum bonded sidewall sticker. The unit being fiberglass does use an aluminum framing studding in the walls and they do weld theirs together with foam block insulation. Over here on the side of the slide, you'll see a few more stickers that talk about that King Wi-Fi system, uh, you know, the extended season package kind of thing, and along with the underbelly armor sticker there, which kind of just talks about that underbelly. Um, you'll see pop up here, 
I'm going to pop up the stick, the uh, picture here of the gas line underneath of there. But you'll also see under there that underbelly, sectionalized underbelly, really nice feature. So if you do need to work on it, you can take it apart in pieces. It doesn't have to be one big long sheet removed kind of thing. Now on the back here, you can see there's a swing arm bumper mount grill on this particular unit here. And that will plug right into that gas line hookup that you've seen on the picture. Spare tire mounted on the back. Typical four inch square tube bumper on the rear. A lot of people store their dump hose in there. Ladder climbing up onto the roof. You want to get up there, inspect your roof from time to time. Make sure that uh, everything is sealed up properly and everything. Just below the center running light up there is where you could do a backup or observation camera if you wanted to. Again, you could do the whole four camera system if you'd like, but that is where it would go just to do an observation camera also. Power cord detaches from the rear right here, and that's probably about a 25 or 30 foot cord stretched out. But this unit has 50 amp service. This unit, as you've seen when we were inside, had two air conditioners on it. This unit again was ordered with the gas and electric refrigerator instead of the 12 volt style or residential style refrigerator. Um, so you have two big black panels there on the side. Those have to be there for maintenance and venting purposes of the refrigerator. It's got to exhaust out all that heat it creates. Um, so that's why you have those two black panels there. But if you get the 12 volt style fridge, you won't have those there. So it's going to look a little different depending on what refrigerator is in there. Up top there, you would also see uh, there is the stove exhaust vent as well. Now, down below, just in front of the jack here, is a freshwater tank drain. Up in front here, you will also see that you do have your dump area right here, along with your low point water drains as well. Your furnace exhaust out right there. And then you have your 10 gallon gas electric water here. And you can see the electric switch and the drain there in the lower section. The other side of the pass-through storage, again, having a thicker baggage door along with the better slam lock that's metal. Now behind this first door here, this is gonna be your docking station area. We'll pop up a picture of this. Um, but inside of here, you can kind of see, it does kind of tell you a little bit about your front jack controls. You have your gray and black handles right here so even though your dump was down there your handles are up here they try to enclose all those to just kind of make it a little bit more winter ready water filtration system built in outside shower your bypass valve as far as uh, all your you know water controls are done right through here by these valves cable satellite inlets you got your city water and your black tank flush fill and then you do have a light switch here as well to just kind of turn on the light up there on the side of the camper right there you're going to see some stickers that pop up and basically, you're going to see the first sticker is going to be your gross vehicle weight sticker. So this is the most you can load the camper up to, frame-wise, weight-wise, that it's able to hold. It also had your axle sizes. It also talked about your production date and VIN number as well. Next is going to be your unloaded vehicle weight. This is the weight the camper weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. After that, it's going to be your cargo carrying capacity, which is the most you can put into the camper. So basically, you take your gross weight minus your unloaded weight, gives you your cargo carrying capacity. Now, they do differ a little bit because some manufacturers will count the propane or, uh, you know, count water in a tank or something along those lines. So there's some different ways that different manufacturers calculate that. But most of them just add propane in there, so it will be off a few pounds. Next is going to be your uh, tire sticker. I almost forgot that. But that is the 
tire size and the proper tire pressure definitely important check your tire pressure guys before you go out on trips if your tires are low they can't handle the weight that's sitting on them and you can blow out a tire real easy so make sure you do check your tire pressure up front here on the cap section you can see this pretty cool they have three built-in led blue lights in the front of it and it's a little hard to see the graphic and stuff but it is a gray it's kind of a darker gray center graphic i know it's getting dark outside so a little hard to see it but um, it does look pretty nice and they're also using the rhino pen box if you do plan on getting like a gooseneck or a trail air airbag box or more ride you've got to know that they are using the rhino box so you can match up the bolts and everything like that now down below there's another storage compartment there you see pop up and that does have some storage room but it also has your battery on the left and some other stuff in here just to the outside of that door is the front jack control and also the docking light control for the uh, front LEDs. All right, guys, we're going to go back inside now, close this baby up. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now back on the inside of the RV here, and I wanted to show you how this kind of functions when we're closing it. And basically what we're going to do, hit the button here to bring in the slide for the kitchen. So we push this button. Now I can let off of this slide button if I need to. So if I need to go out and check to make sure there's no tree over there or electric pole or whatever, I can do so. I can just hit the button again to bring it the rest of the way in or out. So real simple. This is an electric slide. Again, it's kind of a worm gear slide. comes right on in and stops you can obviously see here pretty snug fit there then same thing over here we're going to bring in our big slide on the left here again guys be sure to check out couchesrvnation.com guys they're one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country will definitely save you guys a lot of money on a new RV. Now this slide over here on the left is a flush floor slide. So it actually kind of drops down to floor level and raises up a little bit. So it comes in a little differently than the one we just ran in. So kind of the same thing here. You can see how this all works. Comes right in and butts up real close to the island area there. So when it's closed up, you're not getting really to the back section. You're going to have to bump something out. Um, this gas electric fridge feature will also not open because it does hit the island right there. Now you can obviously get the freezer portion open if you needed to. So you're going to have to bump that out a couple inches to load the fridge if you're stopping at like a grocery store or whatever on the way. Now, when it comes to the bed slide, you can't really see it exactly moving in and out, but we'll show you what it looks like here closed. It doesn't take real long for it to actually close up. Now, the bed slide is a Schwentech in-wall slide by Lippert. So a little bit different style slide than uh, the way it kind of comes in and out. But when it does come in and out, you can kind of see the thing basically butts up against the side of the bed. So you're not getting to that bottom couple drawers and you're not really going to be able to open up that closet very well unless you scoot the mattress out of the way. But you can still kind of use your bedroom, do what you need to do in here. Bathroom wise, you can still come in, use your bathroom, do the basics of everything you need to do in here. You just can't walk between the bathroom and the bedroom from that side anymore. But overall, bedroom, bathroom, functional. Downstairs, not functional when it's closed up, so you would have to bump out a slide there. 
Thanks again, guys, for checking out this video. Be sure to like, share, subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with more videos. A lot of new stuff rolling in, so we'll be pumping out some more content.